Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Differential Diagnosis, the podcast where we differentially diagnose every single episode of House. This week we're dealing with Season 1, Episode 20, Love Hurts, the very famous episode where House and Cameron go on a date and officially create Hammerin. My name's Harvey, I'm one of your co-hosts, and your other co-host is Gaz. Pleasure to be here as usual. Um, this is going to be an interesting episode because it's the basically the opening of a Pandora's box of hell. <laughs> because Hammerin, in my opinion, is the ultimate house fan fantasy in which many, many countless uh, pages have been written about its hypothetical future in different hypothetical worlds um <laughs> and it it's really disturbing having to entertain this kind of notion it's really <laughs> the opening of the pandora's box well we we know what the ultimate house fantasy is i i do not even want to go there yeah well uh, as we know from our last uh, little extra bonus episode we read some fan fiction and uh Hilson stormed ahead in terms of uh, content or pages of content. So um, I guess we'll have to deal with the second best, which is Hammerin, which kind of, um, yeah, I'd, I'd, say, I'd say pretty much puts the plot line to bed as yeah. quick as it brings it up, right? It's a nice, quick little arc gets it over with. Basically, it seems like the writers went, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm I I mean I, I'm I'm glad that they did put it to end. I'm, I mean I'm all I'm all for you know, I don't want house to be some sort of like, you know, sexless like you know, passionless genius character like Sherlock Holmes, but I I I I'm I'm glad that they didn't even sort of really entertain the idea of him uh getting into a relationship with Cameron. It seems to be very much brought up. He's pressured into it. And then it's resolved in a very halcyon way. And it's, um, because of that, it's a nice little arc. But uh, good Lord, if they'd have gone for it and we'd have got a season of him and houses, will they, won't they, that would have been awful. So um, uh, they, it, 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 it's a nice episode because, as you say, the Pandora's box is open, but it slams shut pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> but it's open just long enough to allow the very possibility of Hammerin to persist forevermore in fan fiction. <laughs> Alas. Well, but then of course we have Huddy, which uh, will eventually come out far, far into the future. Indeed. <laughs> But we'll talk about that in 2026 when we get there. But before then, uh, yeah, we're talking about Love Hurts. Um, Kaz, do you want to give us a little plot synopsis and then we'll discuss it further, I guess? That's what we're here to do. As always, the incomparable resource, uh, the house.fandom.com uh, wiki, um, powers this synopsis, propels it forward um, like some rocket ship of truth, <laughs> pushing towards the... Martian climate of greatness. <laughs> I really <laughs> just am riffing here. Um, so here it is. Love Hurts is a first season episode of House, which first aired on May 10th, 2005. When House snaps at a patient in the clinic, the patient appears to suffer a stroke as a result of the confrontation. To avoid legal trouble, he agrees to take the patient's case. However, when none of the easy answers are right, and the patient gets worse, House has to push past the patient's lies to find the right diagnosis. So it's, um, yeah, it's an episode with an intriguing premise, a bit of a strange and unusual patient drama, and um, the good old classic Hammerin storyline. Yeah, I mean, it also includes a names namesake, you. Harvey, it is does the patient. He is, and he, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's where the commonalities end. But are you sure will know that once we <laughs> people will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go into you know the the character quirks um, later on. 
Are you sure? I mean... I like being beaten up. We're very different people. Of course, very different people. Nothing, <laughs> nothing uh, in common. I like to think this is, this was written for you. I mean, how old you, would you have been in 2005? I, I, I think if it was written with me in mind, it would, uh, it, it might have been breaking the law. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so... Harvey's in this, so it's got to be a good episode, right? Yeah, right. it's a it's a pretty solid one, and but we are totally free of Vog, Vogler now. I'd say, I yes, think, you know, Cameron Cameron's back in the hospital. Um, I don't think anyone makes any reference to the money that's been lost. Uh, I don't think Vogler is mentioned. Vogler is well and truly dead by this point. I guess David Shaw got his way and basically just bleached the area. And has completely cleaned the show now. So it almost makes the Vogler arc totally pointless and impotent. Yeah. Well done, David. You won in the end. Yeah, victory for David. Um, uh, although, do you think Hamron was like a little kind of dig at what was what the producers wanted? You know, a bit of, a bit of a love story. And then he just goes, no, you have no power over me now. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, maybe. Oh, no. Sorry. Hammering think, isn't going to happen. I think I think Hammering's established enough. You know, they 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 went on that monster truck date earlier, which wasn't a date. It was just you know them hanging out. Uh, Cameron's mentioned it before. Everyone's been a bit you know creeped out by it because you know she's so young and he's so old. There's clearly like it's clearly a very strange dynamic there, and. Um, we do actually uncover the reasons for why she might find House attractive, not because she actually likes him, but there's like some deep like insecurities there. Okay. So we um, so yeah, we 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 learn a bit about that. So I I I think that's like Dave. I think that's genuine drama that David Shaw thinks is is interesting and a nice little sort of strange conflict that comes out of the team meeting House for the first time and how their relationships develop. Okay. So I um. Uh, I'm I'm not going to wipe Hammerin off as 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 Vogler territory. I think Vogler really is the v- Vogler is the only mi- real misstep of season one. If you want to see it that way, you see, I think Hammerin is handled relatively well. Y- you see, I think the one thing that's missing and was missed in this entire season was Hogler, House and Vogler. <laughs> I'd have loved to see Hogler. <laughs> <laughs> no one always... writes Hogler. Why does no one write Hogler fan fiction? Yeah, that's. I would like to see Hogler fan fiction. Yeah, just imagine, like, you know, Hogler trying to be all controlling. Could have been very, very sexy, very erotic. But the other thing about it is. Uh, Put on that white coat house. Hogler would have been a much more feasible kind of. kind of love chase, like a kind of very perverse version of kiss chase where Hog- Vogler is just not he's only trying to control house to make him his own to <laughs> to kind of have a romantic relationship with him but <laughs> alas another thing missed another opportunity missed um but i for one am on team hogler if i'm going to be on any <laughs> sort of portmanteau team get writing get the fan fiction out i will I'm working on it as we speak. Well, um, well, Hogler aside, we've uh, we got a we got a good couple of things to talk about this episode. So stick around; it should be a good one. But um, without any further ado, let's get started talking about season one, episode twenty, "Love Hurts." Very shifty patient. Indeed. Very re- reminiscent of a friend of mine with the same name. <laughs> well, you you know, I'm I'm all I'm all for you theorizing whether or not um 
whether or not the Harveys have anything in common. So, um, but you know, I mean, if you differentially diagnose my mental state and compare me with this Harvey, and uh, at the end, give me your thoughts. Yeah, I will. I'm, I'm <laughs> but, performing a differential diagnosis right now. <laughs> Just uh... so on this, um, I think. I, I I mean let's let's start with the opening then because we usually like to chat about the opening briefly but I think this opening is a is a once again it's a it's a it's a nice um divergence from what it what it could be right because uh, we do find out that the patient is into being um strangled I forget the technical term it's like as asphyxophiliac or something and um. I guess you you know you could have started the episode with you know him being strangled by his dominatrix friend and then go uh, uh, and like everyone panicking and the music rising but it doesn't do that it leaves it like as a as a secret to be revealed later and kind of just starts you know in the clinic uh with actually house wilson and a random patient who is sort of just being kept in the exam room so he doesn't have to go back to work uh just discussing the the Cameron date that's upcoming. So it's a nice, I, I, I think it's a nice little way that the uh, show introduces the patient in a more interesting way, keeps that kind of patient secret to be revealed later. And on top of that, like gives, gives a new reason why House should take the case. Like, you know, they're trying to avoid it just being House finds it interesting every time they try and mix it up. So in this one, as you said, it was that the in order to stop the patient from suing, House takes the case, and then it turns out to be an interesting one, which um, I think is a nice little like tweak on the formula. Although, do you sometimes find that it's a bit coincidental that House offers to take a case just for some arbitrary reason, then it turns out to be supremely complex and interesting? I guess the thing that comes across is that everyone goes, wow, House is so fearsome that he actually made someone have a stroke which is a bit of a kind of kind of a little bit of a subverting it like making house out to be more fearsome than he actually is mm. because he's actually very vulnerable in this episode because he's having to go on this date yeah do you do you think it's a an overplayed or out of place characteristic that it's house overplayed like... it's definitely overplayed to try and contrast him with his own vulnerability and his own I guess he's dreading the date with Cameron in a sense. Hmm. He doesn't know where it's going to lead. Well, I've noticed in later episodes, just talking about that element of, you know, House being scary or intimidating in some way. Like, uh, House, House does sometimes get quite violent. Like, he smashes stuff. He, like, hits people with his cane. He punches people as well. It's always been a very strange element to the character, I've found, that he's, like, in some way physically intimidating because um i don't know i don't i don't think hillary comes across as particularly physically intimidating while playing house <laughs> yeah but uh house is always like there's an element of it that he's quite intense and scary mm. or at least kind of someone to be kind of avoided um when he gets fairly cantankerous yeah um and that's the thing. I think it's just mainly cantankerous. He's just very cantankerous, not necessarily fearsome or strikes fear into the heart of individuals. Yeah, per se. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, but uh, the setup for that is that um, the patient is wandering around the clinic, bumps into House. House thinks that he's carrying around a urine sample when it's actually a little glass of uh, apple juice shouts at him and then goes to apologize and then the guy's having a stroke yeah but uh, it does become like a little running joke for now it's quite a, i mean all of the kind of all oh, house is aggressive and scary in some way is sort of i think pushed later on in the series this is kind of the first time it crops up and there's a little running joke that you know whenever house is around him the guy has a stroke <laughs> so or, or something happens and there's like this running joke that house is so terrifying that he's like making people have strokes yeah but it's um um, it's, uh, but there's, yeah, there's not much to say about it now, but I, I think I just start to crop in a bit that house is like, like physically intimidating in some way, um, which does fly in the face a bit of him just being this kind of, you know, snarky, uh, like kind of intellectual who's cantankerous and likes to stay away from people. 
Yeah. You know. We also have House asking Cameron not to tell anyone what the perks were of or the arrangement. Mm. But she just completely goes out and blabs it. No fucking problems well, there. You say that, but House House does say that in front of everyone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, so House says that he doesn't want Cameron to tell anyone, but I, I, having watched this again, I think he does. Or it says no reason for him to say that out loud. It's pretty obvious as soon as they leave the room, people would ask her, the, you know, why would he say that? What's going on? Yeah. Like, you know, he's hired these people to be extremely curious and get to the bottom of problems. Like there's, um, it's very weird. It's like House is, you know, because House, as you say, is so vulnerable about the date. Uh, I guess it's like part of his character and that the uh, like the only way he can combat vulnerability is like mockery. So I guess he gets it out in the open, looks like he's taking the piss out of it. But actually, he's like totally like terrified of the date, as mm. we see later in the episode when he's kind of, you know, put it, putting himself on the line a bit. He's like preparing for the date and he finally, you know, opens up to Wilson like, oh, am I being really lame? Um when when he shouldn't in fact really care about the date at all like this is just a maneuver to get like Cameron back but he um yeah again like he does dress up he like prepares for the date there's clearly a part of him that cares a bit but uh he handles it in like a really mocking way which is definitely seen in the way that he breaks it to the team in that really absurd way by pretending to keep it as a joke uh yeah. pretending to keep it a secret I don't think he wants to keep it a secret. I kind of think he wants to control the damage by making it look like more of a mockery than it might be to him. Yeah. Um, also, a different interesting thing to note is uh, House is no longer busting uh, Chase's balls as much. Yeah. Um, well, that's what I meant by Vogler fallout. A stop. Like literally, yeah. even even the even the fallout relating to Vogler has gone now. Like, yeah. I would say that after two episodes, Chase should probably still be in trouble, but it's over. Like, no one wants to talk about Vogler ever again. The arcs have just been cut off. Any sort of potential arc that could have been made of that, gone. Uh, it's a yeah, bit weird. It, there could have been a lot of drama with, um, like, Chase, like, having turned up against House. But um, I, I, I do get the sense that because it's connected to Vogler, like, no one wanted to do anything with it. It's um, There could have been way more things that came out of Vogler leaving, like... Because v- Vogler, like, you know, he's a big deal. He's bringing $100 million. Like, people almost get fired over him. Like, it splits the team up. Chase totally betrays everyone. You know, Cameron leaves. Mm. And then uh, within two episodes, they kind of clean it up and it's all finished. And, yeah, we then get this, like, kind of, like, date subplot, which is, you know, which interesting. Is... But even by this point, like, it's so unrelated to the Vogler thing. Well, that... actually, it is completely related to the Vogler thing because it's the condition of Cameron coming back after she sacrifices herself. She is the final, the Hamron plot is the final <laughs> kind of unfinished business of that whole oh, uh, little mini scenario. Oh, oh absolutely. I mean, it's, it's connected, but it's not like, I don't think there's enough of Vogler stink hanging around that when you think of the date, you think of Vogler, right? That's kind of what I mean. Well, it's not like... Well, without Vogler, the date doesn't happen. I think this is the last bit. It's just my opinion. It's yeah, the last bit of the Vogler fallout, or Vogler fallout. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's my opinion, I guess. But once this date's cleared up at the end of this, then Vogler is gone forever. Yeah. The sink is expunged. I don't even think anybody ever mentions Vogler again. No. Maybe. Not at all. Well, we'll have to see, but yeah, I, I, I don't think so. Like, even Tritter's brought up later in the series, but, um, like, after Series 3. But yeah, I don't think Vogler's ever brought up. Okay. For, very weird. Clearly very disliked. <laughs> um, another thing we should bring up is the clinic case is a bit funny. Well, of course, yeah, we've got the... Uh, the clinic case, which I guess, like the clinic case, is kind of thematically tied, right? It's um, yeah. it's pretty much uh, two old two old people who are um, you know, one woman asks House to tell her husband uh, to tell her seemingly her husband that can he stop taking Viagra for like medical reasons because she doesn't want to have as much sex. She's kind of sick of sex, and then the husband comes over to House and he asks House, you know, oh, can you lie to my 
supposed wife, um, you know, so that I can stop taking the Viagra and not have as much sex. So it seems that both of them don't want to have as much sex, but they don't want to tell each other. And then finally, everything confronts everyone. And it turns out that firstly, they're having an affair at like 80 years old, which is pretty funny. Yeah. So they're but not husband and that, wife. Yeah. They're, they're, I guess, boyfriend and girlfriend in a retirement home <laughs> going behind their partner's backs. But on top of that, like, then obviously they do confront each other and everything's fine. But I guess it's all about like communication and mm. healthy relationships, which is kind of happening while the house is preparing for this date. Um, I don't know. I get the sense that they're kind of tied or like there's an attempt to tie them thematically. Um, I don't think it's a particularly strong one. I don't think it's as good as like the series best, but it's there. Um, that's about the physical and emotional costs of relationships, right? So in the case of Harvey, your namesake, completely unrelated <laughs> to you, um, he needs uh, kind of asphyxiation and um, kind of pain as a release uh, to be vulnerable. Hmm. Um and that can only be done through this relationship he has with Annette. Um, then the you've dominatrix. got the physical, yeah, a dominatrix. Um, and then on the other hand, you've got the the elderly couple, um, and they're having literally it's fit their relationship is physically harming uh, the woman in this case, but also neither of them really want to be that frisky all the time i guess um, yeah and that, that's kind of the toll that certain physical relationships can have i and i guess i don't know how it ties into house i mean could you what do you think i remember also harvey's uh dominatrix relationship also means he loses his family yeah so there's a cost yeah there's a cost there as well yeah, which which does come up later is very entertaining because they they need the family to sign off on one of his treatments. So basically, House just lies to them and tells them that their son is dead, and then blackmails <laughs> them <laughs> that he'll tell the community that they let their son die if they don't help. Which yeah. is um sort of yeah like, but that that element of like as you say the cost to relationships. It's not like the family turn up and you know they talk and everything's solved. It's yeah. Harvey's actually unconscious while his family come round, so he always has, you know, he ends the show in the same situation. He still has that damage from the relationship, so um, they don't really even attempt to tackle with that side of the uh, narrative. But, um, yeah, in terms of, I don't know, I guess House, <laughs> I'm trying to think really, because House's relationship to Cameron is strange it's whether or not you even think because House has been in relationships and we've heard that he was in a relationship with a woman called Stacy who obviously if you watch the show you know but for now we just know that she was a woman who um has clearly like had a big effect on him like uh there's a consistent thing where people come to Cameron to warn her you know that House might hurt her like emotionally by not being invested but Wilson actually comes to Cameron and tells the opposite he's worried that she is going to hurt house because he's seen him like you know struggle to get over this relationship with Stacy over the last five years a relationship that's also tied to the loss of his leg which mm. is the reason why that relationship ends which we find out in the next episode so it's um I guess yeah you could say there's there's a lot of loss from relationships on house's end but his is that it but like in the however like everyone else's like relationship problems come from them being in a relationship so harvey's in a relationship with his dominatrix he loses his family but he's still in that relationship the old couple they're in a relationship and they're having an affair but they're not communicating properly but like house's real loss from relationships is when they like even the fact that they could end right he's like he seems to like he's got like a problem investing with people but when he does it's when it fails that he falls apart which i guess is kind of tied to the way he conducts medicine 
it's kind of like if he doesn't succeed, then he fails and it's a huge blow to him, which I kind of like that there's a similarity there in the way he handles like his medicine and his life. Like there's like this kind of goal, this success that must be achieved or else it was worth nothing. And um, I'd say that's pretty much like, maybe that's how like the destructive relationship theme is kind of tied to house. It's not yeah. so much if he goes with Cameron that there'll be a problem. Like it's not like they'll have a bad working relationship. That's kind of never brought up. It's more the idea that if he starts dating Cameron, it doesn't work out. That would be the problem. So Cameron's got to be very all or nothing with house. Which is yeah. um, kind of kind of a bit weird from her end. It means that she can't just casually date House <laughs> and find out if they're meant to be, or else he'll have a total nervous breakdown, according to Wilson. <laughs> um, but I guess it's an interesting element of House that we've seen him being so like shut off from people that actually you don't recognize that as a weakness until the relationship element is brought in, because that's the only time he really has to open up to someone, and then we find out kind of how not strong House is. He's actually incredibly vulnerable and he hides everything through sarcasm. And I think this is like the first time that we really see why the sarcasm and deflection is there. Because if he doesn't have that, then he cannot cope. Which um, lends an interesting element to the to the character. Yeah, I think it's one of the kind of outstanding puzzle pieces, isn't it? has been established in the season thus far is like Stacy who is Stacy why is Wilson meeting Stacy why is how so reticent about that and how does it then kind of lead to how to the lead into the question of well how does house live he has no long-term relationships apart from his friends and his enemies and his um how would you put it his colleagues um mm. where is the romanticism of house and i guess this is what it's leading towards this whole ha hammering situation of yeah because the, like the you weird say, thing it, like you say, if he has this relationship, it could lead to some very bad outcomes for everyone. Yeah, because the um, I mean, we could talk about the date itself. Because I have a, uh, there there are a few readings, because as we said, like the hammer and subplot is is dropped. It's not like dropped in the same way Vogler is dropped. Like they're not trying to get away with it. It's resolved. It's just resolved very quickly. And I think the date itself can be read in several ways. Um, so I'll just, I'll just lead on with the ways that I think it can be read. And then obviously I want to hear your opinion on it as well. So there's, there's the so, sort of, um, <clears throat> so the way the date was resolved is they go on the date and, um, you know, it's kind of like house is making reference to the fact that he's not good at small talk. He thinks dates are awkward and, um, in 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 a way that I kind of think is hammed up, like yeah, House is like an intense guy, but we've we you know we've seen him like have you know his uh, famous Chinese his famous Chinese meal, yeah, at Christmas yeah. with Wilson, right? He's like he's not incapable of just chilling out and having a chat. He likes doing those things, but with Cameron, he kind of overplays the whole point of the day. Is like oh, it's really awkward that we have to sit here. I'm so bad at it. I don't know what to do, which um I feel is kind of hammed up by House to kind of make the date seem more he kind of tries to downplay it just downplay like dates as a whole it comes across as very like yeah it comes across like he's trying to be more of a maverick than he is it's kind of i i, I wouldn't use the word edgy but i would yeah. say it's possibly more he's kind of playing up how edgy he's being he's basically just like trying to lay waste to any custom <laughs> you know with any kind of you know reasoning whatsoever but the so the interesting thing is that then, um, like, Cameron tries to start a more intellectual discussion, like using, like, Freud. And uh, it then, like, that then leads House on to, like, read her. And he basically, you know, just says, he brings up the fact that she married a man uh, years ago because he was going to die. 
and they were only married for six months. And he basically says that, you know, she's a person that wants to fix people. And that's the only reason she likes house. So he kind of reads into why she likes house. And um, totally dismisses the relationship, just says that she's not attracted to him. There's no reason to like him. He's not a nice person that she should give it up. And then kind of the date, like the scene ends. And then afterwards, there's kind of the illusion that they had an all right time, but it was a bit awkward and that neither of them want to go on it again, I guess, because, you know, possibly House convinced Cameron that that's why she liked House or kind of Cameron just thought it was an incredibly jerky thing to do and didn't think that they'd be suited in the end. But I do wonder, and this is what I mean about the, yeah, like how much is House trying to like force away human connection is that I wonder how legitimate House's reading of that situation is. Like, does he really think that Cameron is trying to fix him? Or is he just saying that to totally put her off? Like, to what degree does he believe that reading? Because I, I get the suspicion that House doesn't really believe that. I get the suspicion that House is so scared of being in a relationship and opening up that he pretty much shuts it down the only way he knows how to. Like, because mm. uh, she uses the Freud example saying, you know, if you tell me you hate me, then I'll think that you're just denying your true feelings. And if you tell me you like me, then it will be you accepting those feelings. And kind of the joke is that she's putting him, you know, in a catch 22 where he can't get rid of her. So what he instead does is then turns it on its head and says, you know, it's, it's not my feelings that are wrong. It's your feelings. You like me for stupid reasons. And that's yeah. the only way that he knows how to get out of that situation. So I kind of feel it's like House kind of like treats the, the date as a puzzle to get out of it. But I'm not entirely sure how much House deep down doesn't like Cameron. You know, it's it's entirely reasonable that, you know, he's I, 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 I suspect that he's just like just once again, it's like another deflection. He just wants to avoid it completely, which um then makes his relationship with Stacy very interesting because it's like, oh my God, you know, what did Stacy do to him? Why does he have such a terrible desire to never be in a relationship again and open up? But, um, but sorry, that was a bit of a long reading, but I don't know. Do you think that House is like, like criticism of Cameron is like warranted? Or do you think it's like just him consistently trying to get in the way of his own happiness well, and not change his life at all? It's it's true to form of his uh, way that he deals with emotional situations, either to shut down or react with anger or kind of indi being indignant. Um, and I guess in some ways you can read it like that, that he's just using it as a way of getting out of the emotional difficulties that they have, that he has with regards to facing having another romantic relationship. But I think, in my opinion, he... he he and he knows that it just wouldn't work. It doesn't seem as though it was really going to go anywhere. If you get what I mean, because of the professional relationship would just get in the way. Hmm. And we find out in the future that he's done that before, where he's had a working relationship with someone and then goes into a relationship with them. Um, I don't know what happened. Uh, We'll have to see how his how House's arc changes in order to make that work. But I guess it's the fact that it's just not feasible for him to have as a fellow uh, someone who he'd be romantically involved with. I mean, does he? Do you think that he actually likes Cameron? That's a good question. Like in that way. Well, we know we know that he. I don't know. Well, we know that he finds her attractive, right? We know that much. Yeah. <laughs> Although that could still be him, like, messing with her that, you know, that's the reason he hired her. But let's 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 assume he's telling the truth there. I don't know. When he... When he... Uh, you know, when, when Wilson pulls out of that monster trucks thing, I don't think it's a coincidence that he goes to Cameron first. Uh. Um. You know, whether or not he doesn't think of Cameron romantically, he certainly 
has an easier time approaching her with things like that because he feels like an idiot asking her to go to monster trucks but he does go to her first and i think you know that at least says you know and and there are several other instances when when they're going to be um possibly fired by vogler she's worried about it and you know house and chase even says oh no he's not going to fire you he loves you and then, mm. you know, when she does get fired, like he spends a long time coming after Cameron. And I wonder, you know, Cameron's a good doctor, but I wonder to what degree that is enforced by her being a good doctor. I, I do think that House has a soft spot for Cameron at the very least. Um, although she is she is a bit more of a, you know, puppy eyed and naive than Stacy is. I think when yeah. finally we meet Stacy in the next few episodes, we kind of see the kind of person that house really likes and cameron and stacy are very different in that way stacy mm. is a lot more forceful and confident which cameron certainly isn't at this point in her life although she does go on to become a bit more like that so um i think he's got a bit of a soft spot for cameron uh, okay but 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 as you say like you know possibly I th but that could just be you know just a a, a, a liking or he just you know likes her naivety or something it, it doesn't necessarily have to be that he wants to you know make her his girlfriend and is denying it so maybe you're right maybe it is just that it's an honest reading but um he's he's so avoiding he's he's got so many avoidance tactics that i do wonder to what degree he is avoiding the situation yeah and i guess it's one of those ambiguous things and also just because you're attracted to someone doesn't necessarily mean that you are in love with them or if you're fond of them doesn't mean that you want to pursue a romantic relationship yeah very true um, i mean it does make more sense that he'd pursue a romantic relationship with cuddy like they're more of a similar age uh cuddy's got a bit more of a forceful temperament which i think that house likes um i think i think that well they have a yeah. history they have a history that goes beyond the com like the timeline of the show right yeah yeah so that comes into it too it's there's like a world beyond that but i don't know these are all kind of very open questions that i guess we'll slowly re return to them we have them answered as we go through the see the, the entire show but we'll we'll see absolutely so, um but, uh... I but yeah. I do think the fact that there are even open questions there for something that in many other shows would be very cut and dry does say a lot about the kind of drip feeding way that the character traits and motivations are being given to us yeah. and how more complicated some of the characters are that they can be read in several ways, even with just somebody going on a date with someone like the fact that we can both come to different conclusions about, you know, their feelings towards each other, like. I think that's nice. I think that says a lot about the show. Yeah. It's probably the reason why people like the characters so much. Yeah. And are so intrigued by House, especially. Yeah. But the other thing I wanted to do is a little um, digression, I guess, um, yeah, to on. Chase and his <laughs> experiences with the more uh, the kind of BDSM side of things. Oh, that yeah. That led yeah. him to know who annette is and it's all it's just funny because you just see all these kind of weird knowing and awkward glances from chase <laughs> especially when he investigates the patient's room and looks at all the bdsm stuff it's like ooh, ooh, maybe the answer <laughs> is here i'll just keep looking at them awkwardly yeah chase is a little subplot <laughs> uh, with his like bdsm history is um i know it could be seen as a plot convenience but you know if you ignore that it is it is just very funny yeah um but yeah okay. yeah go go into his relationship with with annette uh so they've met at bdsm kind of ish parties i guess because he was going out with a banker who liked to be burned i think was what he said and so he was <laughs> really was kind it. of awkward about it it's like oh i i don't know how to process this in terms of the case and doesn't reveal it and then house chastises chase for not revealing that fact because it might have been of relevance in fact it was mm. 
Um, I'd say it's just funny seeing him like uh, d engaging with all of that. And then it's kind of the metaphor. Uh, there's a metaphor of him just popping loads of Tic Tacs that he's taken from uh, from Harvey's house. Um, I do love Tic Tacs. You do Damn. love Tic Tacs. One See? tick off the box. <laughs> Many, if you ask me. <laughs> You've already kind of lashed out at loads of people <laughs> in, a, in a fit of, like, madness. Um, uh, and he's just, like, popping all these Tic Tacs all the time now. And it's kind of like, is that a metaphor for the fact that he kind of digs Harvey's shtick, as it were? Maybe there's maybe maybe there's a really good fan fiction to be made of it there. Absolutely. Chase and Harvey. Charvy. <laughs> well, you know, um Yeah, I, I, I find Chase is very like Chase messes up quite a lot in this episode, which is interesting that the chastising is finished. Yeah, because like, I didn't do get his the balls sense... busted for it. Uh he does slightly, but like, you know, he's I mean, he was getting chastised a lot for, you know, being treacherous. <laughs> and then in this episode, just after we finish all that, he not only doesn't divulge very important information, but he also misses a pretty massive clue when in <laughs> Harvey's apartment, the house just kind of has a eureka moment on. It's um, it's it's very funny just how strangely incompetent Chase is in this episode. He's yeah. definitely not on point. He's not. It's not the best that Chase could ever be, and yet if it. it it would have been really nice if the drama was compounded by his treachery. It's like, you're not only treacherous, you are really bad at your job in this episode. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a... Uh, but on, on on the same lines as that, like, Chase's relationship with his, like, uh, BDSM background, which is, once again, like, just nice character building, nice background building. Yeah. The, um... The thing as well is like Chase, Chase consistently has this. Chase seems to have extremely uncomfortable, borderline cringy moments with uh, patients out of any of them. There's something about Chase, which he like, I think he's trying to be like a bit like, uh, and this kind of leads to is he wants to like have the kind of anarchy and like problem solving as like element to house. Yeah. It's like uh, there is, there is a later episode where like, uh, you know, there's that very uncomfortable moment where Chase kisses a child uh, later <laughs> on in season two, which we'll get to. Yeah. But the first element of that is that he needs the um, patient Harvey to sign a consent form. Oh, this which... is the gra this is the best bit of the episode, in my opinion. Absolutely. Which uh, Harvey doesn't end up doing, which is why they're then bringing the parents and that element happens. But yeah, so Chase, I guess, tries to go into like dominatrix mode. <laughs> <laughs> and just like says to Harvey like you will sign the consent form like really hostily which doesn't work because um yeah I mean he's not Annette the regular dominatrix but it's uh it, it it kind of it does lend a lot to like you know Chase wants to be one of those you know like house he wants to think outside the box try crazy things and you know, trying to emulate someone's dominatrix experience is pretty insane for a doctor. It's yeah. it's a very I think it's more uncomfortable because it's played very straight. It's not uncomfortable. I found it a bit cringy because it's played straight. Like it's not like a it's not like that humorous. I, I don't know if you know what I mean. Like I found it really funny, but I don't know if the show is making it seem funny. Um yeah. and I don't mean that in the sense that like, you know, the whole like his dominatrix bdsm relationship is funny i think like that's like totally cool it's more when chase tries to emulate it that it becomes a bit absurd that chase it, just thinks he can just step in and speak confidently and that the guy would be like yes i'll give into your every whim it was I'm interesting into the BDSM. because it it was funny because it's it's in those moments that chase comes across as really goofy yeah it's it, it it is a very goofy moment but i get the feeling that it doesn't really come across as goofy in the way it's portrayed yeah yeah you I, will if, you, if you get what i mean consent. like it's hmm? <laughs> but when he says like you will sign the consent he's just like what <laughs> <laughs> I, I i think it comes i maybe i'm maybe i'm reading too much into it but i think it comes across as a bit goofy it is very goofy and it's yeah. um yeah, and it's uh, 
Chase has a lot of moments like that with patience, but I think it works in the context of Chase wanting to be like sort of thinking outside the box and he wants to emulate that level of house. So those kind of those things that were set up and around the pilot and paternity of like, you know, everyone's trying to emulate a different aspect to house's behavior or like fight against it. It's nice to see that still in motion, even 20 episodes later. Like, they haven't lost sight of that still. It, it, yeah, it's that emulation thing, isn't it? It's like, hey, I'm going to be the best house. I'm going to extol the virtues of house and be the best yeah. part of house that I can, best version of house that I can be. And it's like, oh, it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, as we've always said, like, you know, uh, Foreman wants to be, like, the best doctor. He wants that bit of house. He wants, yeah. like, the tenacity. But Chase definitely is going for the creative side. Mm. the wow that guy thinks outside the box what a great doctor which you know trying to emulate a dominatrix is definitely part of that um and what does cameron then what's cameron's spiel like cameron's not necessarily trying to emulate house i think cameron is is there just because she's a good doctor and she's there to learn but i think the reason why cameron is interesting is that she has this kind of uh sort of empathetic compassionate approach like overtly Whereas mm. House does not. And I think it's like the way that House's cynicism kind of influences her and like a point Cameron's compassion influences House. Yeah. So um, I don't, that's that's why I said like it's not just about emulation. It's fighting back. I think their, their, their interesting relationship is more like, you know, the, the c competition between those two like approaches to medicine rather than... Um, like Foreman and Chase, who are more trying to emulate parts of House. And then Foreman also has that, like Foreman's fighting back against House's like total amoral, like anarchistic approach, even though he wants the doctory skills that House has. So it's um everyone's everyone's coming at it from very different like fields, but it, they're all uh it's nice that those are being consistently grown on. And I think Chase is a great example of that in this episode. Yeah. Okay. But um in in summation, Gaz, what do you what do you think overall about the episode? I think I it's a very middle of the road episode with a centerpiece that is very revealing of House. I think mm. my my personal feeling is that it's largely okay. It's good, uh, but the thing that kind of elevates it is that date scene, which kind of subverts the expectation that they would, you know that um, House would date Cameron because she's a woman and on the team and there needs to be romance. Um, but it also sets up questions about Stacey. It sets up the climax of this season, I guess, as well. Mm. We start looking deeper into House's motivations, into why he's the person he is. So, yeah, it's looking really good. I, I think... This is more of a setup episode for the remainder of the season. Much like the season didn't really get started at certain points. As we've discussed in previous episodes, yeah. it feels like it's being fed in. Yeah, like uh yeah, in the same way that like detox kicks off a lot of House's character. Yeah. Th this kind of does the same, but not with his drug abuse, but with his relationship status because then the final two episodes are very focused on Stacy and his romantic histories in the past um yeah I agree it's like it's it's a fun little story but I think that it's the date and the revealing of um House's attitude to relationships is what makes it like very interesting um yeah. every every so often the show manages to really combine everything into one i think dnr is a perfect example as we've said like that's where the patient story and the kind of house's character growth really go hand in hand this one kind of has like you know a great moment in house's growth or character revealing which is what i really enjoy about the show they're my favorite bits but um it's also got an interesting mystery to go along with it so yeah as you say like good middle of the road good episode with a lot of interesting setup for the last two episodes of the season, which yeah. are pretty much, you know, the strongest, nearly. Yeah, and I would say the key point in this episode that then kind of 
it's like the opener of the next couple episodes that we're going to be looking at is the exchange with House and Annette, where she says, you know, you have to be, you know, the relationship that she has with Harvey is nothing to do with getting their kicks off, you know, getting their kicks from a kind of particular kind of sexuality. It's about being completely vulnerable to someone and that yeah. in becoming vulnerable to someone, you uh, will change, you'll mm. evolve. And in a way, House hasn't done that for five years. No, which I think, as you say, which is why the episode then ends with him looking at old pictures of him. And I believe it to be Stacy. Yeah. Um, it, it could be pictures he took with him and Cameron. It doesn't really show them clearly, but I think that would be a bit weird. And a bit too a old, tunnel. really. Hmm? <laughs> and the picture <laughs> looks really t uh, way too old. Yeah, that's true. But it's... Uh, yeah, so I think it's... Um, but then, of course, you know, as you say, he they talk about being vulnerable. He thinks on it. He goes away. He looks at these pictures of him and Stacy, And um, it says a lot that then in the next episode, when he has to host a lecture that it's strange that he then pretty much tells a story which alludes to that entire relationship. Clearly, it's on his mind. Yeah. It's, um, very good setup for the next episode. Maybe not the strongest episode it could have been, but as setup, it's fantastic. Um, I guess this is this is it. This is the one of the central themes of the season. It's about change. Mm. So one of the things Wilson talks about is that it, no, not what Wilson, but one of the main things about House is that people constantly talk about how House has changed or that his drug addiction has changed him or his injury has changed him. Mm. Um, and I guess we're going to look into why that all comes together. Why, how did it change him? Yeah. And also why hasn't he changed since? Mm. And I guess that's what Annette's line is about is that you, you changed, but you haven't, you changed at that moment, but, you know, instead of being the kind of more able doctor that he used to be in a loving relationship, he became alone and cranky and disabled, um, and he sees that as an impediment and in pain, um, this addresses that, the underlying change behind that but also why he hasn't changed by being open to people now mm. and why he's refusing to engage in a relationship with Cameron, I guess, is that he is probably afraid of change because change seems to have negative effects for him, it seems, or at least this last time he felt that way or felt yeah, that he changed. Being scared of being happy is a, a recurring thing that comes back to again and again yeah and i think that's that's something we're starting to see now as we get to the final stretch of this season is that one of the big questions is how did house become who he has become through change hmm. and will he always be like this can he change and quote fix himself or not yeah yeah well it's uh well hey well this 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 episode of the podcast was really set up for the next episode where we're going to be talking about three stories Whoa. which is a bloody monolith of an episode and uh, i hope we can do it justice well we can put in a lot of planning for that one yeah because it's uh i i mean it's 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 a iconic episode and all of this build up is really worth it it really is a fantastic episode of house really cements the show so um i'm very excited and i hope that you can uh join us this thursday for a little extra episode but next week monday that's what you should tune in for as we talk about three stories but um yeah guess thanks for thanks for joining me to chat about love hurts Always a pleasure. And what is your conclusion on me and Harvey having anything in common? What's your official diagnosis? Um, I guess you're stranger than fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next week. See ya.